So, a Suffolk sculptor, Sean Hedges Quinn, has recently uh, has already created amazing likenesses of Sir Bobby Robson, Sir Alf Ramsey, and Captain Mannering. And this weekend, the unveiling of his latest work, a sculpture of Gracie Fields, takes place in Rochdale, her hometown. And it's a bit of a Suffolk double whammy, to be honest with you, because Roy Hudd will be doing the unveiling of the sculpture. So we can talk to Sean now. Good afternoon, Sean. Hello there. Hello. Uh, so, yesterday when I asked you for a photo of what you've created, you said, no way. Not allowed to do that. <laughs> but you said, you, you did say, though, I can describe it to you. So, describe what you've made. Okay, basically what it is, is I've made a classic pose, really, of Gracie Fields. After a lot of research, um, of, uh, she's wearing a, 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 a 50s dress. Which was which was pleated, which um, which is a beautiful dress, but it was a bit of a, a mistake by me because uh, sculpting pleats is practically it's very very difficult, and it was a bit of a nightmare. But it looked fantastic. Um, but it's, it's basically a statue of Gracie uh, in her pomp, in her prime, in the fifties uh, when she on stage performing at the end of one of her songs, switching her her, her dress, and it's, it's lovely, very nice. So do you work from photos? Did you, did you find a photo that you liked and you worked from that? And then do you make a, a model of it or drawing? How, how do you work? Explain the process. When you were told, uh, right, you need to do a model of Gracie Fields, what was the th- first thing that you had to do? Uh, well, the first thing I had to do was find out about her, her character. So I, I did uh, weeks of research. So basically I would read her autobiography. Um, I'd watch DVDs, watch some of the films she's made featured in archived footage of her performing, uh, all that sort of thing. And then uh, I had uh, uh, a guy called uh, Seb uh, Lissandro, who is a Gracie Fields uh, enthusiast and has the world's greatest collection of Gracie Fields memorabilia. So he supplied me with all the photographs I needed. Um, And basically then I make a shrine of Gracie Fields images uh, to to create a, a small miniature version of her which the client could look at and say, yeah, I like that pose. That's a really nice pose. Can we have that big, please? And then I will, from that maquette, which I created from all my research, I will then scale that up to a seven and a half foot version of Gracie, which is what will be unveiled on Sunday. So from start to finish, how long has that process taken? So I think we spoke to you about this time last year and we knew you were going to be doing it then. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, it, it takes around roughly, about, I'd say, between six to nine months. Uh, to create a statue from scratch. And do you know where in Rochdale the sculpture... Well, hopefully you do, because you've got to be there for the unveiling, I'm guessing. Do you know where in oh. Rochdale it, this will be? Oh, yeah, it's going in a beautiful location. It's um, going uh, right outside the town hall, which is um, a magnificent building. And uh, it's a uh, real... Uh, the architecture is, is absolutely fabulous. And, it, and I mean, the rumour was that um, Adolf Hitler was so impressed with this building, if the Nazis had won the war... Um, he was going to take Rochdale Town Hall down brick by brick and relocate it to Berlin. Uh, so it's that. Uh, is that impressive? Yeah. That is impressive, yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I did do some working out here, and it's going to take about, if you want to go to the unveiling, anyone from Suffolk, yeah. it's going to take about four hours. It's about a four-hour drive to get to Rochdale, I've worked out. Um, so what time, do you know the unveiling, what time the unveiling will take place? Yeah, the unveiling's at one o'clock on Sunday. One o'clock. Um, yeah, one o'clock on Sunday. So you'd have to leave at nine. Nine o'clock. Sunday, yeah, yeah. You're about about then. Is yeah, that the time you're leaving? No, I'm leaving on the Friday because I've got a, a, a VIP dinner dance on the Very Friday nice. night, fifties theme, with all my family, which would be fabulous. And uh, I don't know if Roy Hudd's going along to that, but I'm looking forward to meeting him, obviously, on, on Sunday. Well, you know what? I'm very glad you've mentioned Roy Hudd because we're going to be talking to him straight after the traffic and travel. Um, earlier on, we heard from Sean and Roy Hudd will be unveiling Sean's sculpture of Gracie Fields in Rochdale on Sunday. I think I might have said Rochfield earlier on by accident, but Rochdale, definitely, on Sunday. Still takes four hours to get there. Uh, Roy is president of the uh, British Music Hall Society and I think actually knew Gracie. Um, so Gracie was a st- uh, star of cinema and music hall. Now, Roy, I can imagine this being a bit of an honour for you. Well, I was absolutely knocked out when they asked me to do it because I knew her fair pretty well, you know, and she was a great help to me and a great buddy. And uh, it was interesting because <laughs> I'm doing a broad church at the moment, 
you know, recording the last series of that. Oh, yeah. So they said, well, this, these are the recording dates we've got coming up. And I said, I've got to have this one off. I've got to have yeah. this day off to get up to to Rochdale to do this, you know. So good on them. They said, OK, we'll arrange that. And they give me the day off. So I'm oh, thrilled to bits about that because it really is a great honour for me. You know, she was, without doubt, I think... For my money, the very, very best female performer we've ever produced. You must have country. seen you, you must have seen her grow up uh, as you were growing up. You must have seen her performance. It must have inspired oh, you very much. So, but uh, slightly later in her career. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because um, yeah, uh, I obviously watched Gracie a lot when I was a kid. My gran used to take me to Variety Music Hall and all that stuff. But during the war, of course, we saw quite a lot of grace because she did a lot for the war effort and all those things. But then after the war, when I went, came into show business, my agent, his mum and dad, were Grace's agents, you see. Ah. So I found my agent, Maurice Azer, and I went round to see him at his house one day. And that was the first time I saw Grace off stage. She was sitting in the garden there having a cup of tea, you see. <laughs> Morris said, oh, this is Roy Hart. He said he's a comedian. She said, oh, is he? She looked me up and down. She said, hmm, are you as funny as you look? <laughs> I said, I hope so. She said, so do I love you. make a good living. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the first time I met her, and she was a great buddy. And she never changed all the years, all the years I knew her. She really was just the same as she came across. Now, that doesn't happen very often in our business but she was exactly the same on as she was off. She was the ultimate professional. She was at one time, she was the highest paid film star in the world. People forget that. She went to Hollywood, did all the things there, but she always wanted to come back home. And is that's what she came back home. Is there a and piece she had of got work? loads of hit movies and things, but she came home because she liked where she lived. She liked the atmosphere in this country and all that stuff. She had to come home. Right. Is there a piece of work? If someone's not familiar with her work, is there a piece that you think people should watch to get an idea of what she was like? Well, I mean, the thing is, you'll, you can find all sorts of stuff on the uh, on the web, you know, yeah. thing, whatever it is. Uh, YouTube and stuff, there's lots of stuff of Gracie on that. But the tune that people still remember, you know, very young people too, remember her great hit song, which was Sally, Sally. Sally, Sally, pride of our alley, you know, that was a great song. Um, quite interesting because she did it on the very last variety, Royal Variety performance she did. She did about, I don't know, about 25 or 30 Royal Variety performance. She was hugely popular. But on the last one, she said, and they're all shouting out the audience, including the Queen Mum, Sally, Sally, you know, mm. for her to sing it. And she said, well, she said, I don't know, she said, 50-odd years I've been singing to Sally, and it's a man's song, <laughs> which it was, you know. But she was down to earth. She was funny. She could sing opera like you wouldn't believe. She did funny songs. She could make you laugh. She did everything. She covered the lot. She was a blooming good actress, too. Now, have you seen the sculpture yet? No, I haven't, but my okay. pal, uh, pal Seb Lizandro, who's organised the whole thing with the Rochdale people, has seen it, he said, and it is terrific, he said. Brilliant. And you're going to be there in Rochdale from 1 o'clock unveiling the statue. I uh, shall be there. On Sunday. So yeah, uh, remember? I can't wait to see it myself. She was the most beautiful girl. I loved her. You know, she was an amazing girl. She lived in Capri, of course, which was another one of her big song hits was on the Isle of Capri that I found it, you know. Cause she was born uh, in a chip shop, wasn't she? Uh, well, she, she lived right. above, yeah. Not on Capri. No, no, in Rochdale, <laughs> yeah. That's right, in the <laughs> Rochdale. Well, she came from the humblest of backgrounds, yeah. Grace, and that's where she she died on the island of Capri, and it was a pal of hers, introduced her to the island of Capri, and she fell in love with it, and that's where she lived yeah. all her life and would always come over and do concerts and things. But she lived in a little village in the centre of Capri, called Anna Capri. And we went to see her, myself and my missus, and we sat on the balcony, I can remember it now, on the balcony outside the house, overlooking Capri itself with all the lights and everything late at night. And she said, you know, they've asked me to do another LP, it was called in those days, 
And I said, oh, yeah. She said, well, they want to do all the old ones, you know, Sally, Sally, biggest aspidestra in the world and all these. She said, but I want to do some new songs. There's some great new songs on. She did actually record the theme from The Godfather, Speak Softly, Love, which was absolutely beautiful. Mm. But I said, well, any others you want to do? And she said, yes. Now, whether she recorded this, I don't know. But we sat there this night with all the stars and everything in Capri, and she sang, unaccompanied, she sang, Send in the Clowns. Oh. And I've never experienced anything like it. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up. She was over 80 then, and it doesn't matter, because she could tell a story in a song. As very few people can. She could. Sinatra could. She could. One or two other people, but... Those were the two that I always remember who could make sense of, of a song, tell you the story behind the song, and both of them to I put them together because they could both turn a very ordinary song into something very special. Roy, thank you so much for talking to me this afternoon. Some wonderful memories. It's been Not a pleasure. Off. Thank you. Thank you okay, very much. Cheers, Matt.